Hey, what's up? David with Brazos Valley Strength. And this is what's actually, I guess, my second week of my current block. I didn't I didn't film everything from week one and I had the home gym tour planned. So we're starting off with uh, the intro to this block here on week two, but um, I'm feeling a whole lot better. I, I did three weeks of kind of just random training. So last week was really just kind of getting back into shape, but now I think I have a lot better feel for the block that I'm doing now and a lot more thoughts on what I wrote and uh, maybe a few changes that I'm gonna make to the program moving forward kind of where I'm at now. But um, I'm doing some pretty interesting stuff in this one and I wanted to break all of those things down. So first off, this day that we're showing right here is kind of broken into two days. Um, I labeled it on, on the spreadsheet, if you look at it, it's, it's all day one, but I have it labeled as day 1A and day 1B. Um, in the future, I'm actually just gonna break this up into two different days. So I'm now training six days a week and I'm starting on Sundays for my I guess 1A here with the bench press. And really the main thing is I, I wanna be able to do a little bit more upper body and lower body work on this day. And it just, the session was getting way, way too long uh, and you know really not productive with the things I wanted to get done. So I'm breaking that up. And also um, as I, you know, in previous blocks, pushing squats tends to really mess with my upper body stuff after it. So I'm um, trying to break those things up is really the, the main objective here. So anyway, a big part of what I'm doing with my bench press is kind of what you see here. So I'm just doing a lot of reps. Um, I'm not doing a lot of upper body accessories that really target the pecs as I've had a good amount of pec strains. Um, I, I, with, with these, you know, with, with all the rep work, it's, it's really about just trying to, to find a flow. I think with all the pec strains that I had through the last year, I, I think I've gotten uh, really, I don't know, forcing some movement at times, really not very comfortable with where I, I want myself to move. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit less, um, arching a little bit less, not trying to really do anything crazy as far as my position or grip or anything, and just, just letting stuff flow. And I think this day is already really accomplishing what I really want it to. None of these reps really are hard at all, but actually as I was getting in the last maybe two sets of this day of the sixes, I, I kind of hopped up and felt like, man, I really think there's kind of a breakthrough here. I think I'm really feeling like I'm connected to the bench, which I'll have more to say on that later in the week. But anyway, most of my accessories at the moment are, you know, kind of overhead accessories, which I'm really enjoying, you know, this one right here, kind of this Viking machine overhead press is something I, I used to do a lot of. Um, and I'll bring it back in, definitely gonna keep it in. And really the goal is just general hypertrophy, shoulders, arms, triceps, whatever. Um, and, and really just to take a load off my pecs for the time being. Um, I, I think I'm tolerating stuff well with my pecs and maybe be able to bring some stuff back in that, uh, that I think may be valuable for me. But if, uh, if really all this overhead pressing goes pretty well, then, then I may just keep that in as long as I'm making bench press progress and staying pretty healthy. So making sure that I, I'm able to do a lot of accessories here when I actually have the energy early in the week, I think is uh, has been a lot of fun for me, especially as I'm moving up in weight classes. So um, yeah, not much to say on, on day one here. I'm um, just kind of light, high rep work, kind of getting myself primed for the wet rest of the week and got to make sure that you don't miss that anabolic window.
So starting here on day 1B, I guess we'll call it, this is this is where I think things get interesting. Right? I think that my lower body training, my squat and my deadlift training is, is some of the, the more interesting stuff that I'm doing at the moment. Um, I, I've definitely been leaning more and more towards less work for my squat, or at least less um, actual squat work itself, um, getting some work other places. But this day, I'm literally only doing one set of squats in the, in the program. It says up to a five out of six RPE, um, but I, I'm feeling like this is actually going pretty well, and I'm gonna start actually pushing this a little bit higher into the seven and eight range with this one set of squats. So a lot of the things that I have in the program that just uh, you know getting things going, we're kind of writing things based on um, the assumption that I wasn't gonna be coming in totally healthy. I wasn't sure how my knees were gonna feel, my pec was gonna feel, all those kind of things, and so I, I was I wrote it a little bit conservatively, but uh, but as I go through it and kind of get a feel for things, I'm I'm being willing at this point to get a tad bit more aggressive. So I'm using this day of squats to practice squatting. And I, you know, I think as I'm getting going with this, I'm, I'm kind of getting a feel that this is going pretty well. I'm doing a few more warm up reps than I normally would, sets of uh, two or three on my warm ups that might normally do singles. So I'm, I'm getting a, a few more practice reps in there before, you know, the, the heaviest work and just kind of moving on. So. The idea with this is that I'm going to push intensity on the squats and not really worry too much about my volume overall uh, and, and actually bring the volume from my belt squats. So by doing less competition squat work, I'll probably have a little bit more energy to go pretty hard on the belt squats which I've always felt have, have been a really, really good driver for my squat. I really feel like it helps make my legs actually stronger, um, increase my mass there, where I don't always feel like that with my squats, or at least the return is not really what I would want it to be as far as um, you know how much I get beat up, how much fatigue I get from actual squatting and the progress I get, where that relationship kind of feels flipped on the belt squat. So at the moment, I'm going to just be pushing belt squats a lot harder and kind of treating them in my head as if they're a, a competition squat movement and uh, and going pretty hard at those and we'll see what happens there. So also, I think I mentioned in my breakdown video for the Virginia Pro how much I really liked more hinge movement in there and I was forced to do it because I wasn't able to do quad stuff. So uh, by removing some squats in certain places, I'm feeling like I have a bit more capacity to add more of this hinge stuff that I really think will help build my deadlift overall. Kind of feeding off the first day of bench press, this this day is really my my more kind of uh, accessory secondary bench press day. Um, kind of the, the middle of the week, the, the goal is to have my first day and my third bench day, so not this day, the other two days, be a little bit harder. Um, the, the feet up bench here, I think one of the, the big objectives was um, to, to help me just flow to not worry about weights to not try to do too much with my setup and you know all those things were kind of the the thoughts coming in and i think i'm actually doing a better job than i expected on my regular competition bench but you know i think the the feet up bench is something that i can you know when it's when it's jammed in between squat and deadlift workouts like this that, that I, I i'm kind of willing to to go in and have a have a break from trying to arch real hard and to do all that kind of stuff so um you know taking away some of the I don't know, mental barrier here, I think is actually getting me a little bit more effort. And I think that's the the big thing overall with my bench is really just getting myself to be excited and to try hard and give myself accessories that I really like. So at the at the moment, I, I'm, I'm really liking the flow. I'm doing more higher rep stuff. I, I have more thoughts on that that I'll talk about on my third bench day. Um, but anyway, this, this bench day is more just accessory kind of bodybuilding stuff.
So carrying off what I said earlier in the week about belt squats and just squat strength in general, this is another area that I've made kind of major changes with. Um, I've always been doing belt squats after my deadlifts on this day for a while at least. So, you know, potentially calling this a third squat day. I don't know if that really counts, but anyway, I've actually moved the deadlifts up to before my, or I've moved the belt squats up to before my deadlifts here. So historically, and I, and I mean historically as of a few years ago, I haven't done it super recently, was I was having a whole lot of success always squatting before I did my deadlifts, in particular sumo deadlifts, was that I just feel like squatting definitely helps me get warm and kind of loose in a way that uh, is difficult to do without a whole lot of range of motion from the deadlift. So uh, I, I used to really strongly feel like I was always better at deadlifting post squats. And I, I've had a ton of success at competitions, always feeling better at competitions than I have in training. And so I, I thought I would bring this in. I, I don't think that this will really harm my training at all. I don't think that my deadlifts will be worse, but I'm really going hard at these belt squats and really trying to treat it like a primary movement. Um, I, I don't think they fatigue me a whole lot. I think I can train them pretty hard. And so far I, I felt like when I go into my deadlifts after these belt squats, I've, I've actually felt really loose and uh, and I, I've been happy with the, with the success. I know I'm only two weeks in, but just the concept feels like it's really, really clicking. So uh, my deadlifts are, at the moment are, are sort of uh, on the comeback. Um, currently only, only pulling like 320, I guess 705 is my top set here, but I'm actually not going to be pushing the top end loading on my squat. I, I hopefully will be getting it up, you know, somewhere around 350 kilos or 770 as a single, but I'm kind of thinking of that as a, a priming kind of warm up, you know, practice doing singles and practice holding. But my main intent at the moment is actually going after the, the set of six following it. And I've had some success with some higher rep deadlifts. And really, I'd say more than anything, it's just about giving me something to uh, to go hard at work in a rep range that I that I haven't been going after. And again, this was something that I I planned coming into this block, kind of unsure how healthy I was I was going to be and if deadlifts were going to mess with my knees. And uh, so far, they really haven't. But I'm still enjoying training pretty hard, doing something that I haven't been doing. So I have some goals up into the 700s as far as the, the sets of six. But um, ideally, this is kind of just letting me flow and um, kind of build more reps in the good position that the that the belt squat warm up concept is actually allowing me to do. So um, just as far as movement stuff, I think that, that this setup is is, a, is pretty good for me. I'll be interested to see how this goes. I'm, I'm genuinely interested to see how singles respond, how the sets of six respond. Um, but we're gonna see, I'm trying to you know, really bring some emotion into this set uh, and see how high I can drive this one up. So this is what is always my strongest, my best bench press day of the week, um, post squatting. Um, so even day one and day uh, my, my first and my second bench press day are sort of pretty close to, to squats. And, and this is the furthest away from squatting. So I, I usually bench press the best on this day. So um, this is the day that I'm gonna be putting the most energy in. But I wanted to talk about some of my ideas here. I talked earlier about just creating a flow and not really forcing things as far as um, you know arching too much or doing anything like that. But the other thing I'm gonna be doing is actually doing a whole lot more touch and go reps. Um, you know, warm ups, I'm, I'm doing more reps and warm ups like I mentioned I was doing with my squats. Um, but even on pretty much all my rep work, currently my plan is to pause the last rep of every set. Uh, but it, it's just a kind of a intuition here that 
allowing myself to commit to the rep on the descent, um, you know, kind of actually getting myself to be aggressive, sink it into my body, kind of use some power off my body, uh, and and uh, maybe in some ways emulate old Jake Amendola. He does a lot of touch and go reps in training, you know, kind of a flat back bencher and, you know, this maybe the strongest bench press in the world. So this was 182, so 402 pounds, which actually was one of my better benches in a while, so actually surprisingly healthy. I think the, the warm-up stuff felt pretty good. Uh, this set was a bit of a of an overshoot, but again, just kind of trying to be aggressive. Most likely, I'll be repeating this kind of stuff next week. Uh, but another change that I made in the program as well was switching the close grip feet up bench press to touch and go bench press that we'll see here in a second um, with the the higher reps. So just trying to to lean into the stuff that I actually feel like is working. I, I was planning the close grip feet up as a you know tricep hypertrophy exercise because uh, I was going to stay away from my pecs to some degree, but bench press has been feeling very very solid and so i think doing touch and go reps with like one 150 so 100 like 330 pounds right here is uh i think something that might be a really good driver of progress while i'm avoiding other pec dominant exercises
So I just wrapped up my training week. Um, instead of doing a voiceover for this day, like the rest of the days, I, I figured I would just talk off the cuff here. I, I think a lot of the stuff that I would have had to say about this session specifically would have been kind of redundant, you know, stuff that I, I've probably already talked about um, game plan wise in other sessions. So I figured I would just give a, a little bit of an overview of kind of where I'm at for the year. Uh, I'm extremely motivated. I, I you know, I, I had a great year last year. I felt like I got a whole lot stronger, um, had, had two really good meets. I don't think that I put the total on paper that, that I think I'm capable of. And I, I think literally everyone in the world probably says that every single meet that they do. Um, so I, I think I'm just really motivated to continue to drive. I mean, I know I'm physically stronger than I've shown and, and you know, making some really, really good progress. So I'm, I'm excited right now to feel healthy. I feel really, really good. I feel good about the, the game plan that I have moving forward for this year. Uh, I feel motivated that there's competition between federations. Um, obviously, USA Powerlifting, IPF split, so now there's competition there that I think could lead to some really good things for me as an athlete that I have some good choices to, uh, to really kind of, you know, push and make this sport bigger. And my job is just to put on as much of a show as I really can. So I'm excited about really just looking forward to the year as a competitor, um, getting better. I'm really, really excited as a coach. Um, if you're looking for coaching, uh, probably a good bit of you have reached out and uh, you know, you know, my roster is currently full, um, but I'm, I'm super motivated to continue to, to push that and you know, really, really drive up the progress of everybody and push people into bigger competitions and bring all that up. If you are interested in coaching, please send an email and get on that wait list. It'll probably be a little bit, um, but it, you know, it's, it's great that I, I've gotten to where I am there, but you know, at, at this point, I'm really, really motivated. Uh, to, to push people, you know, now with, with myself feeling physically good. I, I, I don't know. I think those two things kind of go together is, uh, you know, the, the, me as a, as a coach and an athlete, I think those identities kind of merge a lot of times. And, uh, and so this year, if you're an athlete watching this video, I, I think you should probably just know that you're, uh, you're going to get pushed. I'm feeling excited and I, I want you to, to feel that as well. So um, overall, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a lot of really, really big stuff. Um, you know, I have, I have specific goals. Uh, I, I mean, I, now I've held records in the deadlift, I guess, in two different weight classes, almost three, uh, moving up to the 110s. I have plenty of room to grow, uh, put a whole lot of hopefully muscle on, um, but pounds on my squad. I, I'm sure I've already mentioned some of my, my goals with, with bench press in particular, but um, this YouTube channel, I have a lot of ideas, hopefully at least for the, the foreseeable future, there'll be videos every week, every other week. I, I do have a lot of ideas that I wanna do, um, but most of my ideas really are coming from conversations between myself and my athletes, that, that I'm talking to them about things that they're struggling with, and, and that leads to productive conversations. And I, and I think that um, a lot of times I don't have the capacity to explain them without the visuals and breaking things down and all that. So it leads to YouTube videos. So you as the, the audience here, if you have questions, please put them in the comments. I, I know I don't always respond to stuff in the comments. And I think a lot of times it's because sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than, uh, than I, I have time to type out or whatever. So um, asking me questions in the comments, sending me stuff on, on Instagram or whatever. I, I think I want to do a, a better job, maybe even some question and answer videos and those kind of things. But you know, anything that you have questions on that you think my style of delivery may help with, certainly ask me those questions because that really does lead to, lead to some good stuff. So um, anyway, if you watch this whole video and you got here, thanks for that. Um, I, I do have some, some big stuff hopefully planned for this year. I'm excited about it. Um, but anyway, appreciate your support as always. So if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.